So, here we go again. Same scene, different technique this time. So you're probably looking at this wondering why I'm doing it again. Well, I think it's a nice scene to do in all sorts of different media, this one. And last week it was watercolour and ink and coloured pencil. This time it's going to be done in ink and graphite. It's a really good combination of media to use. Um, the picture's going to be mostly done in ink, with just the final touches done in graphite, just to lay in a very light tone over the distant fields. Okay, so the paper that I'm using for this one uh, is a bit of an odd choice, actually. I'm actually using an A4 sheet of Bockingford watercolour paper with a cold press surface. So it's got quite a bit of texture on there. Now you're probably thinking, what on earth are you doing using ink pens on a rough watercolour paper? Well, the simple answer is because I'm not normal. I'm a bit strange like that, I guess. That's a simple answer. I can't really think of any other logical explanation for that, um, other than the fact that the texture on the watercolour paper actually helps to break up your pen lines a little bit. If you use light pressure um, with any pen, you know, a fountain pen or a fine liner, light pressure and quick marks on there, you can actually get a very nice sort of broken effect on top of the grain of the paper. And it can all add to the textures and the detail that you've got going on in the drawing. And the pens I'm using, again, also a little bit of an odd choice really, because I'm using a combination of fountain pens and fine liners. Um, the pen that I'm using there is actually a Lamy Joy. Um, this is the first Lamy pen that I've ever used actually. Um, it's just recently been bought for me as a Christmas present by a very kind friend of mine. And um, the first time I held this pen, I fell in love with it. I love that triangular grip section on there. I've never used a Lamy pen before, uh, but this really is, you know, a wonderful pen to use. It actually came as part of a calligraphy set, and um, I bought an extra nib for this, an extra fine nib, um, so I get really nice fine lines. And I've also got, as you can see um, in the picture here now, I've also got a Caveco Sport fountain pen, also with an extra fine nib. You're probably wondering why I'm using two fountain pens with the same nib size. Well, the Caveco is actually a lot finer than the Lamy, um, even though they're both classed as extra fine nibs. So I basically use two different fountain pens to get two different line widths, um, even though they're you know the same nib size. Um, the other two pens I used in this drawing were Copic Multiliners, I used the 0 0.05 and the 0 0.03, uh, yes, 0 0.03. And they're, <laughs> they're very tricky to use on this paper. Um, you really are sort of fighting with them. The pens really don't like the texture on the paper. Um, so it's a bit of a struggle, but it's all part of the effect. You know, you can get some lovely, almost grey tones with the very fine liners when you're hatching uh, and stippling and that kind of thing and um, it doesn't sort of oversaturate the paper, particularly in the distance where we need a bit more sort of aerial perspective in a drawing like this. Those sort of softer, greyer tones with the very fine, um, you know, almost dry sort of pen ink marks on there gave that effect of distance um, a lot easier than using something that gave a stronger, bolder ink mark like these fountain pens do. So I guess really there's some sort of method to my madness, um, this funny combination of materials. I mean, I say a funny combination, you know, you can do pen and wash on watercolour paper, no problem. But when you're doing sort of very detailed ink drawings, you know, usually you stick to a smoother drawing paper, um, you know, to enable you to get those very fine hatching lines and for the pen to move smoothly across it and evenly across it. Um, but, you know, my idea was to really try and get some texture going and sort of include that as part of the detail in the drawing. So actually using a watercolour paper just for drawing alone is, is not really a bad idea. Um, I mean I had no intention whatsoever of putting any uh, watercolour washes over this because obviously the fountain pen ink that I'm using isn't waterproof so I would have just you know washed it away using a watercolour wash but the fine liners would have been okay. Uh, but again, that's what kind of led me on to use a little bit of graphite in this drawing, just so I could get some of the lighter, smoother tones um, that I couldn't achieve um, with the ink pens. 
Now, if you fancy having a go at this one and drawing along with it, it is actually a full real-time tutorial um, over on my Patreon channel. And uh, I think there's seven videos to accompany this. Um, the drawing did take you know quite a while uh, to complete, so seven videos um, were sort of needed for the video series to get all the information across there. Um, I'll leave links to Patreon in the end screen card in the description below as well. Only £3.50 to join. It'd be great to see you over there. And I'll also leave links in the description below uh, to all the art materials that I used in this video as well. And while we're on the subject of art materials, I've just recently bought a new technical pen. It's called a Pentel Serrano Matic. Um, I've never heard of them before. Um, apparently it's quite a rare pen. Um, I think it's from about the 1980s. Um, I bought it on eBay. It was the only one on there, in fact. It was brand new in the box, never been used or inked up before. Um, and I don't really know much about it. Uh, it looks very similar to the rotary and technical pens I've got, the rapidographs and the isographs. But the only difference is with this, this one's got a ceramic tip. Um, so I was quite curious to see what that's like. I've not actually inked it up yet. I will be doing. I'm doing a drawing with it. But if anybody out there knows anything about these pens, maybe you've used them in the past, maybe you've got some now, uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear some more information about this pen. Okay, so I'm getting fairly close to the end of the drawing now. Just a few more little trees and bushes in there. And then uh, it's time to go in with the graphite and try and pull all of this together. Now I use a 2H pencil for this and I just literally flat shaded over the entire background, the trees and everything and it kind of pulled everything together and gave that lovely look of natural sort of atmospheric perspective. Um, now I could have spent the next eight years doing stippling and pointillism all over those fields to try and get a light tone over there but I don't think eight years spent on this would have made for a very good lesson over on Patreon but anyway a little bit of 2H really took care of it and I think it looks you know pretty nice yeah it gave a really nice effect I think to the, the finished drawing there so I hope you like that one as always I look forward to reading your comments always appreciate a thumbs up take care everybody and I'll see you in the next one bye for now